Hey guys, what is up, Don Antio here, back from another video, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Melody Rising with Vengeance, one of my favourite hacking choices of last gen. So without further ado, let's get into the video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So here's a little bit of background information about the game, guys. The game is actually a hack and slash game. It was developed by Platinum Games, the ones who did Ben Out, the ones who did um, Mad World, so they're very used to doing action hack and slash games. It was actually published by Kojima Productions, so Hideo Kojima actually had his hand in this as well. And it was released on the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, and Windows PC. It was released in the 19th of February 2013 and is a spin off of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. This is actually not canon with the franchise, guys. So if you want to play this game, don't worry, it's not going to spoil anything. It's set up to MGS4. Um, it's just a what if Ryan didn't end up quitting um, being a badass ninja. So, yeah, as I said, you actually play as Ryan in this and. You're trying to confront the uh, private military company called Desperado Enforcement, who is pretty much the bad guys in all of this. So yeah, that's just a quick background of the game, guys. So let's just jump straight into the plot, shall we? So the basic story of this game is that while doing security work in an unnamed African country, Ryan and his comrades are attacked by Desperado, a rogue PMC group involved in terrorism. While Ryan fends off Desperado's forces, their leader's Sundowner manages to kidnap and execute Niami, the Prime Minister of this unnamed African country. He executes him right in front of Ryan, and while Ryan's dealing with all this, uh, Sundowner's comrade Samuel Jetstream uh, Sam fights and defeats Ryan, severely damaging his cyborg, uh, cyborg body. Ryan survives this, and later his comrade Doctor gives him a new black cyborg body and sends him back on the field to track down Desperado. So yeah, that's basically the plot of the actual game, guys. So the gameplay aspect obviously focuses on you hacking slash enemies with Ryan's high frequency blade, but not only are you going to be using the high frequency blade, you do get other weapons as you progress through the game, you get different types of boss weapons and you get like sub weapons as well, such as machine guns, rocket launchers as well. And these all have like different movesets to them, so you're not going to be pressing the same buttons and just getting the same move every time. There's going to be high kicks, low kicks, sweep kicks, there's uh, sweep kicks, sweep slashes with your swords. There's all different kinds of moves you can pull off, and they will help you progress through the game a little bit better. Um, also, you do have like light and heavy kicks as well, uh, light and heavy attacks as well, so you can can mix it up, and it does expect you to mix it up as you are actually playing the game. So within the first five minutes of the game, you're actually given a very easy tutorial, which you're able to practice all these moves on a couple of easy enemies. This is by no means any difficult situation. They're just pretty much just standing around, pretty much just run up to them, kick them up to the air, slice them a couple of times, they die. But after doing all this, you're actually giving them a curveball. You're giving them the first boss of the game, and it's a very familiar enemy from a different Mel uh, Gear Solid game, which Ryan started off in. Um, this is by far one of my favourite fights in the game. Um, when I heard the music playing, and you were doing all this hack and slash and moves and all this, my um, I got my blood pumped so so much. It was just so so awesome. Um, I actually will include a little clip of it here, so I'm not gonna talk over it, so you guys can enjoy this. Stop that plane! Do not rest easy just yet, huh? 
Yeah, guys, so as you've seen, that clip was just absolutely awesome. I love that battle so, so much. And the great thing is, it's just not that battle which is like that. Every battle is, like, huge and extreme. And the music just goes so, so well. But I absolutely love the soundtrack to this game. I'm not going to talk about the soundtrack right now. I'm going to leave that for the next part of the review. But, yeah, I absolutely love that. I also forgot to mention about the blade mode. What the blade mode pretty much does is... If you get the enemy down to uh, a certain amount of health, you're able to use the blade mode. This slows everything down and it exposes their body. You can chop up their body and you can pretty much pull their electrolytes out of their body. And doing this actually lets you recharge your own health. So yeah, it's actually kind of a necessary thing to do. But at the same time, it does leave you very vulnerable to attacks. But yeah, that's pretty much just what I'll have to say about the gameplay aspect. Let's move on to the soundtrack and the actual voice acting. Okay, guys, the soundtrack in this game is absolutely phenomenal. The soundtrack was composed by Jimmy Christofferson. I really hope I got that right. And is a mix of both instrumental and vocal tracks, which Blends so, so well this game. I think that was a really good choice of them making the soundtrack the way they did instead of having. I had Grayson Williams, he usually does do the soundtrack for Mel Sold. Um, I don't think his style of music would fit this game very well. It's, it's uh, It needs more of a Devil May Cry sort of soundtrack to it. A lot of heavy metal, um, lots of instrumental tracks, and. Um, Lots of guitarists, stuff like that. So yeah, I think Jimmy and Christophe did a real good job in the soundtrack of this game. I think if they ever make a second one, which I know they probably won't now, because Kojima's left, um, they should definitely get him back to do this soundtrack again. But yeah, as well as that, I'm going to talk about the voice acting. The voice acting in this game is just amazing as well. They've got Quinta Finn back to do Ryan, which is pretty much... He's pretty much just a quintessential Ryan. No one could beat him doing Ryan's voice. The same, in my opinion, no one could beat David Hader doing Big Boss's voice and Saul Snake's voice. Um, people might see that as a stab towards MGS5. Yes, I don't like MGS5, but at the same time, I have no real hate against Keeper Sunderland. Um, I just don't think anyone could replace David Hader. But that just might be me, my fanboy goggles on. Um, as well as that, you got Phil Lamar, who you might recognize as the voice of Hermes in Futurama. Michael Beetle, uh, Beetle, I think his name was, um, who voiced Martin Solis in the Mass Effect games. Carrie Wogren, who voiced Lady in DMC 3 and 4, as well as a lot of other good voice actors. So yeah, Plano Games really went all out with the voice acting in this game. You can really see how much effort they put in this game. Um, I know it's not their own, even their own franchise, but the same goes with Bayonetta. Bayonetta was the same. They put so much effort into Bayonetta. Unfortunately, that didn't do that well when it first came out. Now it's doing a lot better because of the sequel. Um, but yeah, Platinum Games make absolutely fantastic games, and they really know what they're doing when it comes to hack and slashes. So hopefully, um, they actually do get to do a second one on this game. I really hope that um, Konami give them the green light to do another one on this game. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see how much effort they put in the sequel to this game too. So yeah, guys, now I'm going to talk about replay value. This game is about four or five hours long at max. And to be honest, there's not much else you can do once you complete the game if you only want to do this game once. Um, unless you want to go for the trophies or you want to do the harder mode, there's nothing else keeping you from actually just playing this game over and over again unless you really want to. But unless you're a hardcore completionist and you want to get all the achievements, all the trophies, um, there's no real reason to continue playing this game. To be honest, I... I'm the same. I can play this game more than once at the one time. Um, I'm not going to complete the game over and over again. I'm not really a trophy whore 
achievement hoard, so I'm not going to bother getting all the achievements. I get the achievements I want, and then I'm happy enough with the game. I'll probably go back to it someday, but I just won't do it again. It's just learn then. So yeah, this game has no replay value to it. I know it's a hack and slash. Hack and slash usually don't have much to do with it. Um, to do, do after the game, sorry, should I should say. Um, I know games like God of War and Devil May Cry have like a a horde mode, or well, God of War has a challenge mode, and um, Devil May Cry has Bloody Palace, which is pretty much just a horde mode, just continuous enemies trying to get to the top floor of the game. So yeah, they couldn't have really did that with this game anyway, and plus, if they did do it, I don't think it would really be that fun because to be honest, the challenges in God of War are fine once you complete them. That's it. The the bloody palace and double my cry, I never even bothered with. So, yeah, unless you're a hardcore completionist, there's no real reason for you to continue playing this game after you complete it. As I said, four or five hours, and maybe the trophies will add a couple of more hours to your your play time, but it's not going to be enough to keep you playing the game constantly. So let's talk about the issues I have with this game. This game, the game issues I'm not talking about aren't problems with the game, like lag and glitching, um, or having frame rates or anything like that. It's more to do with the actual game itself, the bosses and the controls and stuff like that. These are just sort of the picky things which I find annoying. Some people might not find these annoying, but yeah, I want to talk about them anyway. So let's talk about the bosses being extremely overpowered first. Um, the bosses can feel really overpowering, I mean, sometimes they just spam you and spam you and they can one hit kill you and it just does your head, absolutely, <laughs> and, um, and sometimes you just feel like going, fuck it, I'm not playing this game anymore, it's just, it's unbeatable, but um, I guarantee if you do stick with the game and you do try and you will eventually beat that, I did have a few issues with that with the first couple of bosses and it does... It does seem to get worse as you go through the game. Um, but just persevering, just keep persevering and you should finally beat it. Um, especially the last couple of bosses, they are absolutely a pain in the ass. So yeah, that's just a little one if you are going to play the game. So another one is the camera. The camera can sometimes be very sticky and um, not turn properly. Um, it's especially a pain in the ass when you get some guy trying to shove their weapon, the shift this tab laid up, rounds <laughs> tight white ass. Um, it's just a pain in the ass sometimes. But I don't have this issue all the time. It just seems when I seem to be in like confined spaces and I'm trying to turn the camera to face enemies, um, it just didn't work half the time. Oh, in open areas, it was fine. It was just more confined spaces I had this issue with. But as I said, it's just a minor wee issue and it's not really um, a real big problem. So let's talk about the dodging mechanic. Um, you got a dodging mechanic and it doesn't work. <sighs> let's see. First off, you have to buy the dodging mechanic. Well done. Um, not with real life money, by the way, just in game money, um, in game points. And to do this, you have to press X and A at the same time on the Xbox. And it just does a quick side step to the left or side step to the right. Um, there's no full dedicated dodge button like God of War having with the right analog stick or Devil May Cry. Um, it's just that stupid wee dodge. It doesn't work all the time and it's a pain in the fucking ass to get to work half the time. It just doesn't seem to turn properly or work properly. Um, if you can get it to work, it's fine, but otherwise, jump or try to move out of the way as best you can before the enemy stabs you. <laughs> That's all I have to say um, about that. Um, the next is the parrying. This is just as bad as a problem because they told in the tutorial that the parry, you have to put the analog stick, the left analog stick, the way your enemy's attacking. So we'll just say they're attacking um, sorry, that way. You have to do that and press X at the same time. Um, and if you don't do it like 
perfect time and not gonna parade, you're just gonna block the attack with the end of break and they win stun you which the enemies do have a tendency to stun you a lot as well. But um when the parade does work it works fine. But um it's just getting them to work sometimes it does not work. Especially with some bosses who have very sporadic attacks and they're spinning around and you don't know exactly what point on the spin to block. Um are you gonna spin while they're turning that way or turn that way you have to wait until the sword uh, the tail or the whatever is the whole way around to block it um sometimes it does not work and sometimes you're just better off fucking blocking the attack so yeah that's another wee issue i have with the game um aside from that i don't think i've really had any issues with the game uh the game seemed to run perfect which is surprising because from what i read in forums a lot of people seem to have issues with this game i did play it on patch by the way so no i'm not playing the game after it was patched i didn't patch the game to capture the footage and then afterwards i patched it when i was just going to play it um so yeah i actually got to play the game normally it was fine it didn't drop in frame rates um i probably was doing a lot of frame rate issues and a lot of saving problems and glitching problems on the on patch version but it seemed fine for me maybe i was just one lucky ones it doesn't seem to happen to everyone but yeah <laughs> maybe i was just lucky um but aside from that yeah it's just it was fine for me so yeah that said let's move on So in conclusion, would I recommend this game to you guys? Yes, definitely give this a go if you are going to pick up a last gen system. Definitely, definitely give this a try at least, especially if you're a hacker slash fan. There's not very many hacker slashes this gen, so I'd definitely love to see this get a remake. I'd definitely love to see Platinum Games um, get on our try with this, or at least do it in a second one, or even just a remake. Um, they deserve so much credit for turning an action stealth game into a hack and slash and it turned out so so well as it did um so yeah i definitely would say give this a go it's really really cheap it's fun it's got great music what else could you really ask for the story ain't the best yes but um it makes up in a lot of other ways anyways and it definitely will keep you entertained for at least four or five hours anyway so in conclusion i would definitely say go and go for it definitely definitely try this game at least so anyways guys thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video this is Donato saying keep on gaming and i will see you next time